studio. Uh, we, we, we look at them and we, all of us do this. We just, in the old days, we would throw them out on a table, these little three by five prints. Nowadays, we look at our computer and we have even more, thousands of these pictures that we bring back with us from a reference trip or painting outdoors. And we look at them and we try to decide, well, this one's going to have some promise. This could be a good painting here. None of the photos are ever right as they are. Uh, very few. If, if they are, you should be shooting photographs. But with the stuff that we bring back, we look at it and say, what can we do to this as an artist and add to it and make it better? That's the privilege we have of artists, is to use this artistic license. So, again, I've been on a painting trip outdoors where I've done plein air painting out for, with some old barns around Utah and some little farm scenes and things like that, and that was really enjoyable. But I brought back dozens more photographs that are possibilities that I can work on in this studio later. So let's take a look at one right now that I'd like to show you. This is a little farm scene, and I've just printed this out just on a piece of bond paper uh, on my printer. I'm going to put this up here where we can reference that for a minute. And I'll just tape that up here on this board. And I've got some uh, some tools that I use. And sometimes, instead of going right into a thumbnail study, I'll just take these tools. One is a white charcoal pencil. The other is a kind of a dark a 6B pencil, so I can get some darks. Well, I'll just take those two tools, take a look at my photograph, and say, uh, what have I got and what needs to be changed? Well, some of the things I like about this is I do like the light on the, the barns here. I, I think those are pretty cool. And I like how that light is, is coming down. We have a, a directional light hitting mostly from this side over here. And uh, lighting is one of the most critical things. Uh, we can change our lighting and change the whole painting. So I'm going to look at that and cropping first. In other words, can I throw out some things uh, that aren't helpful to it? Or can I bring some things into it that would be helpful? So let's take a look here. Well, I love these distant cliffs right back in here. Wow, that's neat. That gives it a real sense of, of distance. I don't like the plain sky. Uh, I feel like we need to do something here that's that kind of kills this line and this line and this line that just cuts right across the picture and takes us into it in some way. So as I look at that and, and start to analyze it, I say, well, what can I do with this little patch of light out here? It feels like something needs to be there so that we can have this sense of foreground, middle ground, and distance. So um, one of the things I was thinking about was this big long line right here. This is a nice shape, this is a nice shape, this is a nice shape. But this big long line right here is kind of goofy. Just looking at it, I wonder, what would happen if I move this tree in front, over here, instead of just behind it, just in front of it? And sometimes a student will say, you can't do that, it's not like that. I can do anything I want to do. I'm the painter here, and I can make it the, the way I want it. No one's going to hold this painted, finished painting up and take it out to that old barn and stand there and say, Oh, yeah, you did pretty good. They're just going to look at it and say, Is this a good painting or not? So I'll take my pencil and come back in here, and all I have to do to see what that looks like if it's moved in front of it is to kind of darken it in. And let's darken that in and it will bring it forward that's a pretty big tree anyways and let's put it here instead of back there well if we do that and the lights coming from this side then this is going to have a cast shadow that's going to come off of this side maybe out to about here well this starts to break up this front surface and it gives us a way to come back into the painting. Now all we need is to see some shadows. Let's say if we've got this tree here at this position, we have another one over here that's even bigger. It's going to cast a shadow across the front like this. And it's going to come clear out here. And there might be some other cast shadows that come in from this side. 
But what that does now is that gives us a frame on this side to lead us back into the painting this way. Ah, I like that a lot better. Okay, now our eye isn't going to focus so much on this big long side right there. We still know it's there. But we get the more interesting shapes uh, here and here and here that will help us to bring the viewer into the painting. Let's give the viewer a chance to step into the painting, walk around, find the center of interest, and then spend a little time looking around before he leaves. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Now I like the rest of this. In fact, uh, other than maybe changing the sky just a little bit, I think this, this painting right here would work. This might need to come a little further over, and this one a little further back. Maybe all this in dark. Let's take out that little light piece right there. And I, I think we, I think we have something right there. All right, now let's just take. We've got kind of three shapes here that are the same. So let's let's kind of alter those slightly. Let's bring this one up all the way. We don't like any of these uh, tangents to happen where this line ends right at that. And this line ends right here, and, and we just it kind of continues that line. So let's break this, make this one just slightly bigger in the middle, and then maybe just break this long line right here by bringing this up slightly. Okay, now I'm okay with that, and I'm pretty okay with this one. Let's make it a little fatter down at the bottom right there. And... Yeah, now I like how that's going. A nice interesting arrangements back here. We've taken care of these tangents right there. We we moved this tree in front. Anytime we can put something in front of something else, we want to do it. Now we've broken this plane back there with that. And now the last thing I might do is is just say, well, what is what kind of a sky shape can I put in there? And so I'm just kind of testing right here. What would happen if we kind of had a, a dark cloud that maybe came through and identified a shape that brought this back into the horizon just a little bit. And then that, that'll just create some interest there. Leave it really light here and a few little shapes in the sky that maybe lead down into it. And we have some kind of an S-curve going on. So I'm fairly comfortable now with that. I look at that and that kind of is my road map. Now from there I would do a little thumbnail study and study out the values a little bit. But if I felt really confident I could just work from that. That is my thumbnail study. So this is a method that I use all the time uh, as I do little studies for paintings. I'll sit down, come back from a trip, uh, print off what I think might be usable and then lay them down on my table touch them up a little bit, add some white pencil, add some uh, some darks to it, and and say, well, oh, is that going to work or is it not going to work? And usually I can resolve it so that the, they'll make a good painting. Well, I've only invested five minutes, and now I know if it's going to be a success or not. So never take your photos and just say, okay, here it is. Now I've got to make my painting just like this photo. No. Follow this process. Think it through. Make sure you don't have any funny tangents or lines that are running through it or lines that lead to where you don't want it to go or things in your, in your picture plane that you spend a lot of time on because they're neat, but it doesn't help your image at all. Squint your eyes. Look at it. Say, what have I got there? If you can make an interesting arrangement with your values, you're really going to have something in your painting. So remember that next time and, and, and let's try that. I always do that. It's kind of a little trick that I do uh, that I'm going to share with you. So, and then we'll move into the painting.